Item Number SCP-007-INT Level 4 Secret Containment Class Esoteric Secondary Class Domiel Disruption Class Blam Risk Class Warning Special Containment Procedures SCP-007-INT instances are currently contained in Site-B Toria and Site-PT-4. Studies are being conducted by a liaison group of researchers from the Italophone and Lucifone branches of the Foundation, presently headed by Dr. Pietro Ferreira. SCP-007-INT instances are contained within stainless steel vacuum cylinders, adapted with seals in order to maintain the anomaly within an environment absent of oxygen. The vacuum cylinders are kept within standard welded airtight special purpose containers, specifically for the transportation and containment of SCP-007-INT instances. The containers are secured inside a protective vault with a resistance grade rated 6 under intermittent electronics audio-visual surveillance. According to the normative of the European Resistance Standards, a vault that has a resistance value to breach of 400, 2 locks, and resistance against explosives on top of its ordinary qualities, such as resistance to environmental damage. Hazardous materials, hazmat suits, equipped with self-contained breathing apparatuses, adapted as NIJ Level 2 body armors rated Level 2 at knife resistance and spike protection, and electroshock weaponry, are available for the rapid response containment teams. Body armor capable of protecting against 9mm and 357 Magnum projectiles at velocities of up to 398 meters per second plus minus 9.1 meters per second and 436 meters per second plus minus 9.1 meters per second respectively body armor capable of protecting against strike energies up to 50 joules the vacuum cylinders and the containers are equipped with safety mechanisms accessible only to personnel with clearance level 3/007 INT a minimum of one individual capable of controlling the specific instance of SCP-007 INT must be present intermittently throughout testing periods. Deployment of SCP-007 INT may only occur inside the particular testing course developed for the object or in extraordinary circumstances of field use, sanctioned by the Lucifone Board of Directors, or in the superintendents of the Italian branch. Additionally, in the case of containment failure and if no eligible operators are available to restrain the object inside the cylinder, Instances of SCP-007-INT may be forced into its training course, which may be turned into a temporary vacuum chamber. SCP-007-INT designates an intelligent, highly adaptable, translucent, perpetually congealed substance that exhibits extraordinary plastic malleability. The object exists in the form of four individual instances, Alpha 4.5 kg Beta, 8.5 kg, Gamma, 6.5 kg, and Omega, 15.5 kg, completely comprised thereof. These constructs are capable of complex movement and can reach speeds of approximately 25 km per hour. The object itself possesses the outstanding capability to build kinetic energy through its movement speed. Additionally, the object acts as a superacid when interacting with animal matter. As per the modern definition, a superacid is a medium that presents the chemical potential of its protons as higher than that of pure sulfuric acid. While inert in an environment without the presence of oxygen, SCP-007-INT will enter a state analogous to hibernation. The longevity of SCP-007-INT instances is currently unknown given their self-renewal mechanisms. Instances of SCP-007-INT lack nuclei and tissue components, presenting themselves as amorphous amalgams centered around imaginary cores. The object possesses an idiosyncratic physical model, with ordinary fluid mechanics such as characteristics of a Newtonian fluid and a gel, in conjunction with anomalous environmental interactions such as the capability of levitating upwards to 2 meters from its initial position, despite being heavier than the air. Consequently, 
SCP-007-INT may be manipulated through hydraulic pressure into different shapes and sizes, by expanding or compressing itself, with variable physical characteristics. Peculiarities such as viscosity and sharpness, ranging from known ideal and abstract objects, shapes, geometrical formats to additional appendages, such as pseudopods. SCP-007-INT possesses a specific strength ten times higher than that of stainless steel. It is resilient to a number of physical hazards, including resistance to temperatures between 80 degrees Celsius to minus 80 degrees Celsius, kinetic, and stress damage. 613 kN meters per kilogram. SCP-007-INT is exceptionally weak to electrical damage attaining only temporary resistance to electricity-based stress after being subjected to the hazard, ranging between approximately 30 and 90 seconds. During direct physical interactions between SCP-007-INT and organisms pertaining to the Metazoa biological kingdom, including its several phyla and some species of fungi, the object demonstrates properties similar to that of a superacidic digestive fluid. The process synthesizes matter into a temporary mass, in addition to an instance of the original structure, exceeding mass decays at a rate of approximately 0.5 kg per hour without creating detritus or byproducts. Instances are capable of reporting the exceeding mass into ephemeral copies of themselves, though these copies possess inferior material qualities. Additionally, Instances of SCP-007-INT can reproduce asexually through a process similar to mitosis by using the additional synthesized mass. The circumstances associated with such an event are under scrutiny. Instance Alpha created Instance Beta asexually after consuming several kilograms of matter during an experiment conducted in Site Vitoria. See experimental log for details. The circumstances of the event were replicated but reproduction was unsuccessful. SCP-007-INT displays a degree of consciousness, sentience, and sapience. It is capable of exhibiting reactions to stimuli associated with visual, olfactory, and auditory systems. These pseudo-systems are homogeneously distributed throughout SCP-007-INT's physical form, memorizing and learning through habituation, observational, and social means. The object employs a process of heuristics to rationalize solutions. Different instances display different peculiarities, such as a fondness for certain objects of affection thereof. It is apparent that instances of SCP-007-INT are aware of their lethality, and will not attempt to initiate physical contact with animals to display endearment. Moreover, instances of SCP-007-INT are capable of forming relationships with certain individuals through a tacit contractual connection. Once this specific form of relationship is established, the respective instance of SCP-007-INT will reset from its ordinary behavior and adapt the psychophysical inputs of the selected individual designated an operator. Operators are capable of instructing the object omnidirectionally even without a line of sight with SCP-007-INT instances as long as the respective instance of SCP-007-INT they have established a connection to remains within a 40-meter range of the controller. Only one operator per instance may take active control thereof, but several may exist at a time. Control can be transferred to another eligible operator. Field Report Recovery Site PT-7 Department of Archivology Director of Bibliographic Archives Transcription log for the operational report NR-6 from the Task Force Smoking Anomalous Snakes. I remember that day. Something about the fascists producing anomalous weaponry. Our detachment were pretty advanced in Massarosa, yeah. We were the vanguard. And the reconnaissance team. Neat, huh? It'd be cooler if we weren't the only ones available for the job. Yes, everything went alright until the moment a man appeared with some sort of balloon floating ominously near himself. Didn't seem like a Reggio Esercito uniform, had this type of full bodysuit. No, it wasn't an armor, but reminded me of one of those beekeeper vests, you know? Anyways, so the man started pointing at us and saying something in Italian. 
I think he told us to fuck off or something. Naturally, we opened fire. No fascist is going to tell us what to do. A real one at that. The thing is, that balloon thing just spread itself in front of him like a sheet or something. Our bullets just hit it flat. The thing didn't even flinch or something. So we shot it more. And then it shot us. Not kidding. The thing just hurled into us, crashed on, and started to absorb the poor guy. I still remember his screams. We changed magazines as fast as we could, but that Italian man started running away, so we sent our tacit goodbye to right in the dome, and started to pursue. It's hard to follow a guy in narrow labyrinthic streets, even worse when you have an apparently unstoppable murder machine following you. Thank God that shit couldn't get much speed. We pretty much fucked the stealth up, but that thing didn't seem to mind wasting time eating some fascists. Bless indiscriminate murder, I guess. Due to a stroke of luck, we managed to pepper him with some bullets. Guy left a trail of blood for us to follow. Not so lucky, that fucking thing stormed through our house, now enormous, and rendezvoused with him. We hoped that guy would die due to blood loss or something, so we stood back as he ran away. Not long after, we resumed the search. Funny thing, we found smaller versions of that balloon thingy going around the streets. Those died with bullets for some reason. Our shot shredded them or something. We decided not to touch it, given what happened with… Then we found the entrance to a cellar, got down some stairs to a type of laboratory, if you could even call the place that, found the guy patching himself up, a briefcase, and a huge air cylinder next to him. He said more shit, so we shot him. Right, dead men can't be interrogated, but it was complete self-defense. The guy had a gun, probably insulted our mothers, and the man-eating balloon of death thing was nowhere to be seen. The place had some sort of tunnel leading out of the village, and a small cart to carry the cylinder. We searched around, found some documents, and with a little effort to understand Italian, mind you, it is harder than you think. We realized that our mission was complete seized the whole thing, and dispatched it to Brazil. Better have that thing in our hands instead of some crazy fascist or Nazi, right? Communication between the CL-5 Council and the S-5 Council Site PT-1 Overwatch Council Cabinet Office Extraordinary Communique from the Lusophone Board of Directors Excellent S-5-6 and the other members of the Superintendent Council this missive is accompanied by our best regards. A cache containing an object of interest with the appended documentation, including the byproducts of our research. We consider that these items of interest possess a notorious historical and scientific value for the Italophone Office of the Foundation, an intriguing anomaly pertaining to your predecessors that was recovered by the Brazilian Expeditionary Force. Given the circumstances, we decided to update its designation to SCP-007-INT. Cordially. This document has been electronically signed by the 6th Director of the Lucifone Board of Directors, CL-5-6. Site Vitoria, Superintendent Command, Superintendent Office, Minutes of International Communication from the Superintendent Council. Esteemed CL-5-6, I wish to thank you and the rest of the CL-5 for the letter, and the cash you sent us. In our last meeting, the S-5 Council has revealed the content of your message and decided to start a project to better understand SCP-007-INT. In, in order to do so, we sent orders to both the Archive of the Italian Branch to find as many documents about SCP-007-INT as we can, and to the Research Department to analyze its chemical composition and properties. Also, S-5-05 was intrigued to discover that the anomaly possesses degrees of sentience, and started a smaller research project to evaluate how it does respond to stimulation in various states. I also wish to inform you that the Italian branch may have come into contact with something similar to SCP-007-INT, a weapon developed by the Fascist Council of the Occult classified as SCP-009-IT. We shall investigate for eventual similarities, and inform you of any relevant findings. Cordially, 
This document had been electronically signed by S5-6, Superintendent for the Italian Foundation. Site PT-1 Overwatch Council Cabinet Office Extraordinary Communique from the Lucifone Board of Directors Excellent S5-6 and the other members of the Superintendent Council. We received your kind word with great satisfaction. While scrutinizing our archives for additional documental records regarding the object, we made an equally intriguing discovery. Our predecessor in Portugal, the Scientific Academy of the Anomalous, possessed several documents detailing a very similar anomaly under the alias Onderoy, associated with studies regarding a project codenamed Mel. An incident with the latter, involving rogue agents, forced the project under strict confidentiality. Documental sources imply that the anomaly was acquired during a collaborative effort between the Academy and the Institute. Further investigation revealed that the two instances housed in our Portuguese facilities were perfect matches to the one instance delivered to Italy. Unbeknownst, we had contained the same anomalous object, but under different aliases. These documents will be made available as soon as possible. Cordially. This document has been electronically signed by the 6th Director of the Lucifone Board of Directors, CL-5-6. Site Vittoria Superintendent Command Superintendent Office Minutes of International Communication from the Superintendent Council Esteemed CL-5-6, I regret to inform you that our research in the archives was unsuccessful and that no information regarding SCP-007-INT was found. We theorize that, when the CFO escaped from the Foundation, its members managed to steal the documents about SCP-007-INT from the archives, so that we were left without any knowledge of its existence. This is corroborated by the fact that analysis between samples of SCP-009-IT and SCP-007-INT have demonstrated a correspondence of 92.75%. This, alongside the most recent discoveries about SCP-009-IT's functioning mechanism, led us to believe that the CFO was able to both replicate and improve SCP-007-INT, turning it into a far more stable and controllable weapon. We shall keep studying both anomalies and inform you of any developments. Cordially, this document has been electronically signed by S5-6, Superintendent for the Italian Foundation. Site PT-1 Overwatch Council Cabinet Office Extraordinary Communique from the Lucifone Board of Directors Excellent S5-6 and the other members of the Superintendent Council. The CFO seems like a formidable opponent. In lieu of the recent advancements, the Board deliberated and concluded that the creation of an official joint initiative for the purpose of researching this anomaly would be invaluable, potentially allowing for a paratechnological breakthrough with our combined resources. Should the superintendents deem this project fit, we shall do the necessary for the maintenance thereof. Cordially, this document has been electronically signed by the 6th Director of the Lucifone Board of Directors, CL-5-6. Site Vittoria Superintendent Command Superintendent Office Minutes of International Communication from the Superintendent Council Esteemed CL-5-6 Indeed, the CFO represents the greatest threat to the Foundation in our jurisdiction and has been causing issues since the creation of our branch. However, this letter has not been written to complain about our problems, but to inform you about the progress made with SCP-007-INT. S5-05 and his team had the SCP-007-INT instance in our possession linked with a lobotomized subject to minimize the risk of a breach, and observe its behavior in various situations. These include threats to the subject, isolation, and problems of varying complexity. In all cases, SCP-007-INT showcased basic forms of empathy and altruism by protecting the subject from harm and trying to comfort him while alone. Your proposal has been discussed and unanimously approved by the superintendents. We began selecting the appropriate personnel for the project. We shall wait for your answer before taking any further steps. Cordially. 
This document had been electronically signed by S5-6, Superintendent for the Italian Foundation. Project Mel Site PT-4 Department of Archaeology Directorship for the Institutional Collection Excerpt from a monography about Project Mel An introductory analysis of the anomaly depicted it as a weapon developed by the Reggio Instituto del Italique Anomale. Continuous research indicated subtler characteristics exemplifying a cognitive process similar to that of intelligent creatures, learning through trial and error, observation, and memorization, thus adapting to the circumstances. Instance Alpha is the most belligerent case of SCP-007-INT. It prefers being in combat-oriented exercises and watching martial performances. Alpha has demonstrated a certain degree of infatuation to the party with in its conception, the best performance by using its pseudopods in attempts to imitate some executed movements for the respective party to see. Instance Beta is an exemplary case of personality. I have witnessed Beta abducting a stuffed penguin irresponsibly given by one of its operators, to demonstrate affection. Beta also displayed excitement when presented with pictures of penguins. An extraordinary situation involving Beta happened when it parted itself. Its copy assumed the form of a penguin, which Beta perceived to care for in the likeness of an animal companion. Beta protected and guided the copy through the training course until the spontaneous expiration thereof. Instance Gamma possesses a particularly high physical intelligence. It is expressly competent in solving movement-related problematics, such as obstacle courses involving the manipulation of sensitive objects, and complex movement, and transformative patterns. Interestingly, Gamma has been seen reacting to music by dancing to the respective rhythm. Unsurprisingly, the Academy viewed these anomalous properties inherently connected to the materia prima of the anomaly as the perfect base for technological breakthroughs. Project Oniric is a remarkable initiative. Such notoriety attracted the interest of a rogue organization that managed to acquire parcels of associated technology, an artificial tissue designated Oniric Weave a substance of dreams, malleable such as the mythological Onderoi. The Oniric Weave is an intriguing material. It synthesizes the concept of 007-INT to the molecular level, the capability of transmutation. Project Mel was a preliminary display of the capabilities thereof. The creation of a homunculus requires myriad idiosyncratic components, which in turn requires subcomponents that require raw materials. Imagine producing each component using a singular primary commodity that serves as a base that can be programmed to assume the necessary characteristics of the necessary assets. Similarly to stem cells, the oniric weave can be artificially created and differentiated into specialized components with select and consistent characteristics. Dr. Nathaniel Apontis, Specialist in the Scientific Academy of the Anomalous Special Containment Procedures SCP-007-INT Delta is contained in a modular cell divided into four areas – bedroom, living room, atelier, and courtyard. Each vicinity is under continuous audio-visual surveillance, and furnished simulating the respective ordinary environment. The containment cell is located in the Special Purpose Facilities of the Department of Thaumaturgy on Site PT-4, inert in a trans-dimensional, thaumaturgically simulated environment that may be controlled per necessity, accessible through the cell doors and windows. Asset related to Project Illusionary World The maintenance of assets and commodities is performed on schedule, preventively, or by request, if approved by the current project manager. Pieces produced by SCP-007-INT Delta are to be conservated and maintained following standardized preservation protocols. Description. A peculiarity, Subject Delta is a homunculus created via the psychophysical reprogramming of an ordinary instance of SCP-007-INT. Subject Delta possesses identical abilities to that of a common instance. Its capability of transmutation and of causing damage haptically have been neutered through biotechnological interventions. Subject Delta exhibits complex physiognomical features with the aesthetics of an adult female specifically resembling Professor Emilia Caballo. 
Subject Delta emulates physiological characteristics, with limited phenotypic traits. Additionally, Subject Delta manifests complex psychological traits. It is capable of identifying and rationalizing itself through the use of ideas. Subject Delta attends by the anthroponym of male, considering itself a female, exemplifying the reasoning through logical and behavioral reason. Incidentally, Delta is capable of experiencing and associating emotions and feelings. It is capable of experiencing qualia, particular knowledge of an abstract concept, learning sciences, systematic knowledge in conjunction with globalized objective ideas, and the ability to utilize fine arts for the representation of its ideas. Extraordinarily, following the expiration of its original operator during the 1972 Christmas incident, Subject Delta has refused to establish a relationship with any other individual. The Oniric Mel Incident Site PT-4 Department of Archivology Directorship for the Institutional Collection Excerpt from the reports about the Oniric Mel Incident Several security breaches occurred in multiple storehouses and special vaults during the night of December 25, 1972, through a period of two hours. We are still calculating how many assets were subtracted, and conducting investigations to allude to the events. The group of six rogue individuals responsible for the assault in the special vault containing the asset referring to the experiments conducted by Project Mel was rapidly dispatched by the responsible Rapid Response Security Teams. Obstant to their success in safekeeping, related assets were stolen from vaults of the medical department by a group led by the former department head including several prototype prosthetics and documents associated with Project Oniric. The involvement of personnel associated with the Academy was not a singular case. Several captured and downed rogue elements were also students, professors, and scientists employed in our facilities. It is unclear whether these individuals were sleeper agents, given their history in the organization, or were coerced by a third party. The captured individuals that underwent interrogation expired during the procedures. One captive survived, though they are currently under animated suspension through thaumaturgic means. New security measures are being devised, while the current measures are being revised. Captain Alberto Oliveira